Oh, hi. How are you? Zolvamus here, and welcome to this video. My name. Hello. Hi. How are you? Zolvamus here. Welcome to this video. Today we are going to be discussing Slipknot best to worst. Yes, this is something that I've come up with. Totally original content. Definitely not taking this from notes reviews at all. Not at all. <sighs> Definitely. Alright. You know how this goes. I'm going to rate each album from best to worst. <laughs> Let's start with the weakest. Six. All Hope is Gone, released in 2008. Yes, I know that this is a little bit of a, um, a controversial opinion, but I really don't care. And here's why. Actually, I do care, but who cares? Uh, <laughs> that was random. I love the album. It's a fantastic album. I will not take, take that back at all. My favorite songs are Execute, Geometria, Sulfur, Dead Memories, Vendetta, Butcher's Hook, Gehenna, Snuff, All Hope is Gone Until We Die. The songs that I liked were Psychosocial, Child of Burning Time, and Vermilion Part 2, Bloodstone Mix. And here's where it gets bad. Songs I did not like or enjoy. This Cold Black and Wearing Lights Continue. My issues with the album were Corey's voice and scream in the songwriting. Positives were Koi's voice, songwriting, complicated riffs, solos, mixing, production, and sound quality. Okay. The only reason why I put it so low was because it seems there are a lot of songs on that album that are just more of a... They just feel more stone sour rather than slipknot. And it's more... A feel, a feel, a feel thing for me. The album is very good, it's fluid, it's really well put together, but there are songs on that album that just sound more like Stone Sour than anything else. Um, Dead Memories being a good example, but that is a good example of a good Slipknot song that sounds like Stone Sour. Vendetta as well. Um, uh, wait, wait, hold on a minute. Oh yeah, um... Yeah, but that's about it. The only reason why I say that Corey's voice on this album is a problem and a positive on its own is um, the power isn't as strong as it could be, but it also has that tone that fits really well with the album. Uh, of course, sound quality is pretty damn good on this album, so I'm not going to bash it for that, but that, but that is the reason why it is at the bottom. It is the most Stone Sour sounding album that they've released, and it is the closest that they have come to sounding like Stone Sour. It's still a good album, in my opinion, and I love almost every song except for those two. I just cannot stand this cult black and Where In Lies Continue. Maybe that'll change with Where In Lies Continue, but it will not change with this cult black. I just can't get into it. It's not a song that I can jam out to. Everything else on that album flows really well. The um, structure of the album is really put well to put together. The sounds and the production is really good, so can't hold it against that. Okay, number. Let, let's talk about number five on the list. Slipknot, 1999. And there's a few reasons for this. I am counting everything. I'm counting demos and I'm counting bonus tracks. If that wasn't already apparent, um, I'm not counting live material because that's live. It's not recorded in a studio. It's not mixed, and it's not, you know, you know what I mean. Anyways, the reason why this one is so low is not because of the. It's not because of the main tracks. If it was only the main tracks that I was writing, it would probably be. It would probably come at second or third on the list. But it's more of a it's more of a sound quality issue for me for the on this one, and a few of the bonus tracks. Are, well, one bonus track just sucks ass, and that is the demo of um, "Wait and Bleed" that I I just can't stand. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound. It, it's just it's just horrifying. 
My my favorite tracks on this list are seven four two six one seven zero 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 two seven. Woohoo! That was a mile and a half to read. Sick, eyeless, wait and bleed, surfacing, spit it out, tattered and torn, frail, limp, nursery, purity. Purity is probably my favorite song on that album. Liberate coming in a close second. Prosthetics diluted. No life. Only one. E or scissors. Me inside. Get this. Stamp, spit it out. Stamp you out. Mix. Sick. Molten inject, injected mix. Wait and bleed. Terry date mix. Snap. Interloper demo. And despise demo. Songs that I liked were spit it out. Hyper caffeinated mix. And songs that I did not enjoy were wait and bleed demo version. Issues the big the biggest issue with that album was sound quality and that is the only reason why it is so low That's the only reason That's it. Okay. And the one demo that I just cannot get into and it was released on the 10 year anniversary um, disc So that is why it is so low um, uh, Positives were Corey scream mix Catchy songs and songwriting, which are pretty self-explanatory. I don't have to go into that one very much. Let's uh, move on to number four on the list. Volume 3, The Subliminal Verses. This is, um... This one's a hard hitter for me because my favorite song on that album for a long time was Duality. And it was one of the first tracks I heard by Slipknot, and it and it just dragged me in, and it pulled me into a really good um, sense of what the band was and how they sounded. And then I listened to some of the older stuff that was on Iowa, and then I just started, and it just blew my mind after that. My favorite songs on this album were Prelude Point 3.0, The Blister Exists, Three Nail, Duality Circle, Welcome, Vermilion. Pulse of the Maggots, Before I Forget, Vermilion Part 2, The Nameless, Danger, Keep Away, and Scream. Love Scream, probably one of my favorite songs by the band, and a really heavily underrated track. It is the Ken Utility of, in the, of, Ken Utility and the Coast Guards of um, Slipknot. That's the only comparison I can think of. Um, songs that I liked... The Virus of Life, Opium of the People, and Don't Get Close, songs I did not enjoy were zero. Issues were sound quality and Corey's voice. Okay, this is by far the worst sounding Slipknot album in terms of in, in their whole discography. By far. It is their worst sounding album that they've put out. <laughs> but it, it it fits the album in a way that it, it that I cannot... I cannot fault it a hundred percent for it. It takes it down about ninety, about maybe eighty or ninety percent, but that's the only reason why it's a little lower. The songs are really good. There's nothing on that album that sounds like Stone Sour or anything like that. Positives were Coy's voice, songwriting, solos, and riffs. Um, again, pretty self-explanatory stuff. Coy's voice is pretty good and pretty bad at the same time. It's an angry tone. But it also sounds a little um, weak, and fr it's a little bit of a fragile sound. But it, it's it's really strong in terms of its tone, but it's fragile in terms of how it's projected and so forth. Um, let's move on to number three on the list. Point five: the Gray Chapter. Yes, this is um. A little bit high on the list, and there's a big reason for that. It's more. It this one comes down to a love at first uh, listen kind of thing. My first song that I listened to on this album was Kill Pop, and I loved it mainly because it it, it gave me some um, really dark vibes that I really enjoyed. Went out while I was going through the whole Porcupine Tree thing, which I still love the band. It's still one of my. Uh, it's in my top thirty or top 20 bands of all time, same with Slipknot, and it, it just fits in there. Favorite songs were XIX, Sarcastrophe, AOV, The Devil and I, Kill Pop, Skeptic, Goodbye, Nomadic, Custer, Be Prepared for Hell, The Negative One, uh, If Rain Is What You Want, Override, and The Burden. I did not listen to the other three ones. I think it was Silent, Funny, and Talk. 
I think those that was what they were called. You guys tell me in the comment section whether or not I should listen to them and if I should put them on the list and update it. Songs that I liked were Leech and the one that kills the least. Pretty good songs. Leech has grown on me a lot ever since I listened to it. There are no songs I did not enjoy or did not like. There were a few repetitive parts in a few songs, but that's about... No, in one song. Sorry, in uh, Leech, I think. But that's about it. Positives were Corey's scream, sound quality, complicated riffs, and songwriting. Sound quality on the album was by... It's probably their best sounding album um, up until that album. It, it blows all the other albums out of the water until, you know, uh, We Are Not Your Kind was released. Um, Corey's voice is much, much better um, than um, All Hope Is Gone. I prefer that one more just because it's a little bit more... It sounds a lot stronger and a lot... Um, it's a lot more of a, um, a Corey-sounding scream than All Hope Is Gone in, in um, a weird way that I cannot fathom right now. All Hope Is Gone was a little bit more uh, growls than it was screaming. It was good, it was good, it was good for the um, album, but I prefer uh, point five, um, uh, over um, All Hope Is Gone in terms of screaming, and that is not going to change. So, let's move on to number two. We Are Not Your Kind released in 2019, this year, of course. The album of the year of Slipknot has arrived. But then again, it's a year of Slipknot whenever they release an album. Shit. Okay, so this one was one album that blew me away once I listened to it, and you guys probably remember if you guys watched the live stream. We, my favorite songs on the album were Insert Coin, Unsainted Birth of the Cruel, Nero Forte, A Critical Darling, A Liar's Funeral, Red Flag, What's Next, Spiders, Orphan, My Pain, Not Long for This World, Solway Firth, and All Hope is, I mean, um, All Out Life. And it does count because it is a bonus track on the Japanese edition, and I'm counting it because it is a bonus track. Okay, I said that at the beginning of the video if you didn't catch it. I'm also counting bonus tracks. Got it? Okay. The only song that I didn't particularly enjoy or... Well, I didn't hate it. it it's... Uh, I, I enjoy it for what it is, I suppose. But I wanted it... I, want, I, I guess I was um, expecting something colossal and heavy with it. Was uh, Death Because of Death. And that is the only issue with the album. If, if it wasn't for that album, for that song, it probably would have would have tied with the uh, number one spot on the list. Corey's voice in Scream has never sounded better si um, since 2002. This is the best he has sounded since 2002. It is... It, okay. It is exactly if um, the Scream from Iowa was mixed with the Scream from Point Five, and I love both those Screams equally. Those Screams are, are my two favorites from him. His delivery on this album made it unbelievable. This is my favorite he's ever sounded. And, it, and he's 46. This is by far my favorite voice. And there's a reason for that. And I don't want to get into it. I might have to make an, a separate video discussing why I think that this is the best voice he's had um, since Iowa. But... It's self it's self explanatory to me anyway and to some hardcore Slipknot fans who have stuck with the band since two nineteen ninety nine, which I have not, sadly. I wish I w I wish I had. But either way. Whew. Let's go to number one on our list and if you have not oh wait. Positives. Corey's voice. Sound quality. Songwriting. Vintage songwriting at that. Uh Jane Weinberg's drumming on this album was astronomical. Atmosphere, the atmosphere on the album was unbelievable. My Pain is an unbelievable track. And Complicated Riffs, that's also self-explanatory. All right, let's move on to number one. Iowa released in 2000 and... 
What an album. What an album. What an album. Holy wow. This is an album for the ages. And this is the only... This is one of the only albums I can say in my lifetime that I have not found one song that I hate or dislike in any way. Every single song on this album is my favorite, including the My Plague um, New Abuse mix. It's just great. I love everything about this album. It's great. The only thing that I did that I find is an issue is uh, co- is uh, sound quality, which is a minor thing in my opinion in Corey's voice, but that is also a positive thing. The reason why is because I think that um, the Iowa Scream really dulled down and evolved into the Volume 3 uh, Scream, and it just... uh, Corey torturing his vocal cords that way made um, Volume 3 a little bit less of a... um, um, a little bit less um, heavy in that sense, I guess, and it's just not his most powerful scream when it comes to Volume 3. Iowa is his most powerful ever since now, and that's the only thing that I can find that is an issue as well as a positive thing. Songwriting, solos, and atmosphere, there is nothing on this album that sounds at all like Stone Sour, same with We Are Not Your Kind, and uh, Point Five in Volume 3. Same with uh, self-titled as well. All Hope Is Gone is the only album that has managed to sound in any way Stone Sour-like. So that's the only reason why it's at the bottom. But Iowa takes the top spot for best album. Until, of course, Look Outside Your Window is released. And I will do a full review of that album whenever it comes out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you agree with this list, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Peace.